We believe that we've got to combine and bring together both the social movements that are outside our political parties to bring them inside and make the Democratic Party stand up for what it should be about, uh, going back to FDR. Uh, we believe, like many of you, that every great social movement begins in the streets and ends in the halls of Congress. Um, and I'm not going to bore Connor and go through the civil rights movement, so I'll stick with uh, the uh, women's suffragette movement when they met in 1848 in Seneca Falls to begin to talk about women's right to vote. It was a long time until uh, the president, uh, Wilson, gave us the 19th Amendment. But it was a lot of work and street heat and action through the women's movement that ultimately brought us the uh, women's right to vote. It's that same kind of energy of which we've organized PDA beginning in 2004. So by way of introduction, we are a PAC, but we're unique in that way. And we thank and welcome all of you tonight uh, for being here. Chicago has a very a unique role in PDA's history. For those of you who are new to PDA may not know that history. I do want to share it a little bit and then end, most importantly, on what many of you raised tonight. Uh, how does a small group of people uh, meeting at a bar in uh, Chicago make a difference really um, at the end of the day in bringing about real political change? And I'm inspired and I hope you will be in leading tonight to know that when we meet here tonight, uh, we're not alone. We are part of a larger movement. So I want to end on that note. One of the very first campaigns for Progressive Democrats of America, just by way of introduction tonight, that I want to remind folks that you may have forgotten was the race of Christine Segalis. Christine was who was with us here earlier tonight. Uh, if you remember, many of you hopefully remember, she was the woman that had the courage to take on Hyde at a time when the Democratic Party wouldn't field a candidate, and she ran and received over 40% of the vote. She was the presumptive nominee to come back. She should have rightfully been the nominee of the Democratic Party. But there's somebody you guys know and gotten to know very intimately in the last couple of months, <laughs> your mayor at that time, Rahm Emanuel, who was head of the DCCC, who did not want Democratic candidates to be anti-war, who airlifted in figuratively and literally a woman very courageous by virtue of her service to our country, a triple amputee in Tammy Duckworth, but by no means a progressive Democrat uh, in that district and was brought in to take Christine Segalis out. And that was the first race in which PDA planted our flag as a progressive organization inside the Democratic Party that we believe that the Democratic Party should stand firm for those principles that we were united on of ending the occupation and working for single payer. While Christine was not successful in that effort, those of you to remember in the last month of the campaign when Tammy Duckworth was anointed by the Democratic establishment and by your mayor today, Rahm Emanuel, over 80, well, Interim. we can go through, Interim. we can go through. Well, I'm going to go through the litany here in a minute. If you go through the amount of emails that went out in the last three weeks of the election and the hundreds of thousands of dollars that were raised, beginning with Senator Durbin, Nancy Pelosi, my own Senator John Kerry, Christine Segalis, despite that onslaught, came within three votes per precinct and almost won that election. That's how we were born here in Chicago or the greater Chicago suburb areas of um, this area. So it's always um, with uh, renewed optimism when I come back to Chicago because I know of the fighting spirit you have. And it was great to see Christine here tonight. That was four years ago. Um, tonight, what I'd like to share with you is where we are and here where many of you want to talk about tonight, where we as a progressive movement, both inside and outside the party. Like many of you, I am as frustrated, if not more frustrated with our president. Like many of you, I am frustrated with the Democratic Party or even more frustrated. But I think maybe tonight I can challenge some of you to try to work with me and rather than seeing the glass half empty tonight, maybe collectively together we can begin to see the glass as being half full despite the evidence. And I don't want to be Pollyanna. I want to start tonight and lay it on the line. This week alone, everybody in this room has heard the numbers. 2.6 million more Americans have fallen under the <coughs> poverty line. Um, you have single payer activists here that can tell you the numbers better than I of the 50,000 Americans tonight and undocumented citizens if they're counted into it, over 50,000 Americans um, that are going to lose their lives because they don't have health insurance or the 46 million that are underinsured or have no health insurance. The fight for single payer health care, the fight to bring our war dollars home has never been stronger than it was when we began in 2004. But what's different in 2004 and where we are today are all of those issues in 2004 when many people wouldn't even let us have the debate. A majority of Americans today are with us. A majority of Americans know that it's time that we get on with the fight to bring our troops home from both Iraq and Afghanistan to redirect those dollars and bring them home. The majority of us here tonight, it's not news to anybody here, the majority of Americans want to get on with single-payer health care, Medicare for all, enhanced and improved Medicare for all. But as all of you have articulated, we have an entrenched corporate domination of our political parties and how do we break that stranglehold. So why do I believe the glass is half full tonight? I believe the glass is half full tonight because citizens like you and activists like you are making a true difference. 
and I will just take you through Friday until tonight as a small measurement of that. And we have candidates like Will who are standing up here and are willing to run. And when I hear some of you tonight who are coming for the first time to a PDA meeting, it makes me extremely optimistic on where we are. And to see my old friends here, starting with Bill and Jim Rhodes and others who are still fighting the good fight, and Lenny who stood with me at the social forum and making the fight for an inside-outside strategy, I am optimistic. And Friday, Connor and I began our odyssey that ends here tonight out in Madison, Wisconsin. We were part of the groups that organized on the eve before the Fighting Bob Festival. The night before the Fighting Bob Fest, we were at um, the uh, Barrymore Theater, and we had unbelievable speeches, surprise visit from Bernie Sanders, who I think needs no introduction in this crowd, who is the senator that is carrying single-payer legislation in the Senate today, uh, was one of the surprise guests that night, as well as Dennis Kucinich and Jim Hightower and Tom Hartman and John Nichols. And it was an incredible evening, and that was just the beginning. The following day, we went out. Historically, Fighting Bob Fest was in Baraboo. That's the birthplace of where Robert LaFollette was from. After nine years, they decided to bring it inside to Madison, given there's been a little bit of street heat you might have read about going on in Madison. So they decided to bring Fighting Bob Fest into the convention center, in which over 8,000 activists gathered beginning at 8 in the morning and were there until 4 in the afternoon for speech after speech with an energized crowd that was ready to get to work. And Connor and I were honored to meet activists like yourselves from Wisconsin who are very much engaged and encouraged, despite what the governor has done, Governor Walker, the political energy that's in the community now coming off of those recall elections and the recall movement uh, for the governor is very much alive and it was very energizing. But the person I wanted to share tonight with you a little bit about on why I am optimistic tonight on a personal level about what we're doing and where we're going. PDA, as I said, was founded in 2004 in the belief that we can organize ourselves as a community, not an organization in the traditional sense. Those of you that are in PDA know us to be more than just a meeting, hopefully. Uh, we're really about building community. It's our belief that we have to have a conversation similar to what we're doing here tonight and that our work will continue. One of the persons I'm most grateful for who has become part of our PDA community over some time is Tom Hartman. On Friday, by chance, uh, we had an opportunity to be on his show, and we passed out this letter that we're passing out to you. And, and I encourage you to take a look at it tonight and share with Connor and I your feedback on it. Oftentimes when you're doing this political work as activists, it's very frustrating to connect with people in a very short amount of time, especially when you're tabling, how difficult it is to get somebody's attention and ask them if they want to be a part of something, even if they're like-minded folks. Connor and I were trying to come up with a strategy at Fighting Bob Fest knowing that it was going to be basically a political swap meet. There were going to be 40 different tables there and 30 different organizations. How can we convey to people in one or two sentences what is PDA about and whether or not they wanted to have more information about PDA? So there's always that one window you have when somebody comes up to your literature table and you make your pitch. Will, you're doing it every day at every door you knock on and you have that 30 seconds and how do you connect with that person? So the piece I want to leave with you tonight and dialogue with you tonight is what you challenge me with and that is how do we build a community that can challenge the corporate stranglehold and really work to elect a progressive governing majority. Not just Democrats. Who better than you here in Chicago know that simply electing Democrats isn't going to make a difference? Until we elect a progressive governing Democratic majority, we're not going to get anywhere. So how do we have that conversation? How do we build our community? And how do we get outside of our own silos? How many of us oftentimes have our blinders on and forget sometimes that while we may disagree with move on when it comes to the public option versus single payer, that 80% of the time move on is with us on these issues? So the conversation I want to have tonight is how do we convey the importance to have a conversation with our political allies to get out of our political silos, to reach across organizational lines and have a discussion on how we're going to build a movement that will get on with getting on with the work of breaking this corporate stranglehold and electing a progressive democratic majority. Tom Hartman is my evidence, A, that I want to give you tonight when you look at that letter. When Connor and I asked people if they wanted or knew who Tom Hartman was, I can tell you seven out of ten of the folks that when we were at Bob Fest said, Tom Hartman, I love Tom Hartman, took the letter and left with us. Tom Hartman, like John Nichols, is one of those few folks that not only gets it, but is willing to walk the walk. His favorite line is, tag, you're it. That we each have to take responsibility. And I think that that conversation that we had with Wisconsin fighting Bob Fest activists like yourselves and the work that we did with Tom Hartman to there leaves me convinced that folks are as hungry as you are in this room to be part of that community to make that difference. We believe by taking on entrenched corporate Democrats that are pro-war in the primary, what better way to make our party stronger? 
We did that when we elected Donna Edwards out in Maryland's 4th District. The first African-American woman was elected. She lost the first time against Al Wynn, but she won subsequently the second time. We did not succeed with Marcy Winograd out in California, but we fought the good fight. And we challenged Jane Harmon, who no longer serves in Congress any longer. And I'd like to believe it's because the progressives in that district made her life miserable that she got out. Relationship building and conversation. As I began, and I want to talk to you about what we need to do is have a conversation to build our organization to be strong on the issues that we believe in, to agree to disagree with our friends, but then to come back and agree and to work on those things that unite us. And the last one I want to leave you tonight is with Representative Jan Schakowsky here in the Chicago area. We in PDA got off on the wrong foot with her because of the public option single payer fight. And we had, like many activists, as I know in this community, have had their agree to disagree moments with Representative Jan Schakowsky. And today Steve and Bill and Connor and I met with Representative Jan Schakowsky and we thought we'd meet for 15 minutes to thank her for her work and ask her specifically, is President Obama finally serious? Does he get it against all odds that he is sincere in taking Social Security off the table? And will he really, for the first time, as he articulated last night, begin to talk about drawing down the troops from Iraq in the way that he promised and to bring the soldiers out of Afghanistan in a timely fashion for 1.0 trillion savings. And she said, I think we're finally got his year and we need to push on him. The piece that was important to us and the piece that is important to all of us in this room, I think, is the fight now turns to Medicaid and Medicare. And the work that Jan Schakowsky did, if you remember, on Part D of the Medicare plan to go to bulk pricing for medications and how much money we can save on that if we were to go for that. And we asked her today, if she would work with other members of Congress who have made a commitment to fight that fight and to take that forward, and she said she would do that. We asked her today if she would join with PDA and write a letter to our base of 60,000 activists to work together in that fight and to move the discussion away from deficit reduction to talk about a real jobs bill and to get away from the president's plan where not nearly enough money was being talked about, and she said she would do that. Yay. So what gives me hope, and while we open up this conversation together, is if over the course of the last seven years, with very little money and very little resources, the single-payer movement is stronger tonight than it was last year at this time. And I challenge Jim, I think he would agree that we as a movement of single-payer, whether it be in Vermont, in California, or Massachusetts, or here in Chicago, we are stronger than we have ever been as a movement. Our fight is both at the state and the national level, but we have more allies than we've ever had before, and we have the populace with us. We have an entrenched corporate elite that we have to fight with, but we have the people on our side. That makes me optimistic. We have an America that is ready to bring all of our troops home, not just from Iraq and Afghanistan, to have made it clear after poll after poll that it is time to bring our troops home. We have won that argument morally, and we're now winning that argument economically. That's what makes me optimistic. And finally, how do we build a democratic majority, and why be optimistic, Tim, in this time and year, in this political climate? Because people like Will came up tonight and introduced himself, who's willing to take the fight at the state level, and you have Ilya Seamus here in CD10, who's probably one of the most progressive candidates right now running, and those of you in Chicago have an opportunity to make a difference. The clarion call for me was, you better hurry up, because the election's in March, and we've got to get moving. It's no longer a question of do we primary Obama and how pissed off we are on the Democratic Party. We all agree on that. The question tonight is what are we going to do as a small group of committed activists in this room who each of you represent 100 people in your personal life who if you got on the phone, got on your Facebook page, and got on your Twitter, and got on your phone, could mobilize people like they'd never been mobilized before. And can we be part of a larger movement that can elect not only one Congress member here, which I believe we can do with Ilya Seamus, but what if we elected another Congress member as progressive or more progressive out in California? And I will challenge you, and I think we have that person for you, it just so happens, his name is Norman Solomon. How many of you have ever heard of Norman Solomon and know Norman Solomon? <laughs> Next time somebody wants to talk to you about primary Obama, ask them if they'd like to make a difference. And if they want to elect probably one of the most articulate spokesperson, the national co-chair of the healthcare.war campaign of Progressive Democrats of America, who's in the fight of his political life, who is now engaged to succeed Lynn Wolseley in Congress. How much wow. different would it be if you came back next year at this point in time and you elected Ilya Seamus and Norman Solomon to Congress, and the next time you went to Washington and you met with both of them, do you think the climate will be different than it is tonight? How many of you believe that working an inside-outside strategy by electing two real progressives can begin to change the tide? Anybody in this room believe that or agree with that premise? 
then you're with me, the glass, is, the glass is half full. For the skeptics in the room, I'm ready for your questions. For those of you who believe the glass is half full, how many of you who believe the glass is half full know when I say change makes change? It's uh, fundraising for PDA, uh, which you make a small monthly pledge. How does a small pledge make a difference when 800 people make that same pledge? When 800 activists around the country say, I'm willing to give 10 or $20 a month, that allows an organization like Progressive Democrats of America to concentrate on fundraising. Now, the challenge is, and I'll leave you this with tonight, what if 20 of you were able to do $10 a month, then PDA nationally would be able to give Bill and his treasury, our treasury of PDA, $100 a month. How many of you would be willing to give $10 a month to Progressive Democrats of America to help us with the work we're doing, knowing that if we can find 20 of you, 100 of that would come back to help your chapter. How many of you would be willing to do that? One of you, two of you, three of you. Okay, Connor, this is where you come in. Make sure they get an envelope. For everybody that signs up gets a new PDA bottle. Environmentally collect. It's all Connor's pulling out all the stops. <laughs> So if you tonight decide you want to become a change, make sure change partner, our goal is to reach 20. When we reach 20, then you have reached the threshold that allows us then to put $100 a month, not just once, but every month into the coffers of the Illinois PDA chapter. California, Massachusetts, and Arizona, I don't want to embarrass you guys, but Arizona has already succeeded in that effort and is in the process of doing that. So I leave you tonight to consider becoming a change, make change partner to allow us so that we don't have to send you all of those emails asking for money, but to allow us to send you those emails so that we can elect candidates like Ilya to Congress. So that's the pitch tonight. I tried to cover as much as I could of what I heard, and I'd be glad, based on the time that we have, to take any questions you might have. And at the end of this, I want to thank all of you, sincerely on part of the PDA national team. When we were formed seven years ago, it was our belief that the national team, wherever we traveled, we wanted to spend our last night with those activists in the community having a meal. And in that tradition tonight, we gathered. So Friday, we started in Madison. We were there for two days. I did play hooky on Sunday. Those of you who are hardcore to let you know how sincere I am in my commitment to the Cubs. I took Connor to the game, and we sat in the rain against the Houston Astros. He did insist that we leave at the bottom of the eighth. But we were there on Sunday. And then today, as I said, we began with our meeting with Steve and with Bill and with Connor, with the Congresswoman, and met with Ilya. And here we are tonight to conclude. So I thank you. I thank you for all that you're doing and continue to do. I thank Bill for his leadership. And each of you that I have met individually and collectively throughout the evening have known for a long time. I really do want to thank you. And as Bill said when he left, when we talk about breaking down silos, Progressive Democrats of America had a workshop at the Jobs of Justice National Conference in which we talked about what we just did tonight at Inside Outside Strategy. It was very successful in October. October 3rd, how many of you are part of Rebuild the Dream, know about the new efforts by Van Jones, know about the conference in Washington with Move On. For the first time in the history of PDA, PDA will be partnered with Move On at a workshop there to talk about how we build a progressive community. We're knocking down those silos. And finally, in November, as Bill was saying when he left, PDA and DSA, Democratic Socialists of America, will have a joint workshop at the National DSA Conference to talk about how it is that we can not only talk but concretely bring together the DSA and the PDA community for the larger progressive movement. So I end on that note that I'm optimistic that we can reach across organizational lines and build that movement and get on with electing some real progressive Democrats. Thank you.